So I've got my uh, I've got my phone available here, and I'm going to load up my app. I've got Instagram, and I've got this other alternative app called Six Tag. It's really cool because it has these features that the base that the official Instagram does not have. Uh, the question was asked previously about how do I switch between accounts? Because I can create as many Instagram accounts as I want. The problem is with the official Instagram app, you cannot switch between accounts. You have to log out and then log back in as the other account. Well, I have this app called Six Tag, and it lets me switch accounts. Pretty easy. Not all the apps have it. But anyway, I've logged in. Well, over there. Um, we've logged. I've logged in. I've got this this particular account loaded up. Uh, just to show you here. So, on this account, some of my stats that I have here: followers, following, posts, and tagged. Again, yours might look a little bit different. Uh, post followers following on the iPhone it doesn't mention tagged and on Android it doesn't either that's okay so um, What's the name of the app you say? six tag oh. just the, just the number six tag oh the number six it um, it gives me access to multiple accounts at once so um, we're going to see various concepts over and over on these social networks. Following and followers. So following is how many accounts I'm paying attention to. So if I'm on Instagram right here, I'm following nine other Instagram accounts. If I'm on Twitter, maybe I'm following 40 other accounts. Maybe on Facebook, you know, I'm following. That's good. But followers is the one that, in a sense, matters more, because that's how many other accounts are paying attention to you. And the point is that when I post something on Instagram or Twitter or Facebook or whatever, I want more people to see it. Because not all of those 18 followers there, for example, are going to do anything about this photo. Let's say I've uploaded, let's say I'm a technology company here and I sell technology. Let's say I'm trying to sell this mouse. Uh, this classic trackpad, actually, it's not a mouse, it's a trackpad. Let's say I'm trying to sell this. Well, I posted this on Instagram, and in theory, 18 followers, 18 people on Instagram saw it. A lot of them are just going to say, great, and move on and not care. Maybe one of them will care enough to actually click on a link or do something about it. So the more followers I have, the better. So we're, talk, we're going to talk about various ways to get followers, and these is, this is going to apply to a variety of social networks, a lot of overlap, and then some unique things here and there. One of the ways to get followers is to start, for you to start to follow accounts. You, let's say you follow 10 accounts. Maybe two of them will follow you back. So let's see how that works. Uh, you should have... Um, an icon of a little search. You have a little magnifying glass. So mine, mine is down here. A little magnifying glass. This one right here. So you should have a magnifying glass. Click on that. That's search. So on the iPhone app, for example, it looks a little more impressive. Uh, on the iPhone app, I've got a search box at the top, and uh, and, it, and it has like um, discover new people and such, and then it's got trending tags, and then explore posts. On my particular app, it just says, okay, search. But if you've got an Android or an iPhone, it might be a little more uh, full-featured. So. Uh, we're going to look at these different features, but let's just focus for the moment just on a basic search here. So here we can search terms. Um, we also have hashtags, which we'll talk about what hashtags are. Let's say you have to know what your company is and what you're doing on Instagram. 
That's what the previous two assignments were, to define what your company is, why are you online. So I want to say this company that I've got right here this is a technology company. It's about uh, uh, a social media, it's about uh, selling technology products and services and such. So what I want to search for here, for example, well, what if I start to search for the term technology? So notice I have the option when I'm searching a word, I can either, um, I've got top, people, tags, and places. So, um, top is one way to do the search. People, these are people that might have the term technology in the in their name and such, and then places regarding technology. But let's say I'm going to go to the one of tags. So you see there's also that little hashtag. We'll, again, we'll talk in a little bit more detail a little later what exactly a hashtag is, but it's basically a keyword. So technology, and I switched over to that hashtag. Uh, you'll probably see it called tags. So I'm looking at that, and it tells me that in my case, technology on my screen, it shows that there's about 15 million posts that use technology. I'm looking at my Android over here, and it says 3,333 posts, and on the iPhone, too. Uh, it's also giving me other examples of hashtags or keywords that, I, that, that started with the term I started with. Mine is giving me also technology these days. Technology rocks, technology sucks, technology fail, technology problems. The point here is this is giving me an idea of searching a particular topic related to my company, technology. So I'm just going to choose the first one, technology. That should then bring up uh, a bunch of photos on Instagram that are tagged with technology and it may or may not be accurate unfortunately because a person can use any tag they want and there is a limit to how many but let's say I have a photo of a cat I could put the keyword technology onto it even though it doesn't apply because some people do use this or abuse this to, uh, to try to get views and such. But let's say I'm browsing these these photos with a particular topic. I'm going to tap on one to view it. Let's see this one. Um, so what the screen shows is the picture that the person uploaded. It has their name, in my case right here. Uh, yours is on the top. Uh, it's got the name uh, mine says it, this was uploaded 10 minutes ago. And then their description of their photo. Looking forward to making my first of many Sure Inc. Sure UK purchases. The Sure MV5 microphone. And a bunch of hashtags. So, one strategy to get followers is to simply search, and then when you see a particular picture, you have three um, uh, you have three actions one is to like or favorite the picture notice there's a little heart oops there's a heart on my case on yours you're gonna see the heart you can also double tap if you double tap a picture you give it a heart you double tap it again you take away the heart so, I double tapped it, you see a heart came out, I double tapped it, took away a heart. So I added it. So the point here is, I'm, I'm looking on keywords that people care about, that I care about because that's my company. And I'm going to go in and I'm just going to give, I'm going to give some favorites here. Oh, that's interesting, a USB made out of a cork. I'm going to tap that, favorite. 
Let's see what else. Apple Watch, newest edition. It looks kind of cool. Double tap. Give it a heart. The you point of the... Yes. You just have to push forward. Yes, you should be able to double tap and it favorites it. The point of this, especially if you're a brand new account, no one knows that you exist. Remember when you were a little kid and you needed to make friends? Maybe you were lucky and someone came up to you and said, let's be friends, and then you're friends. Maybe you had to go to another kid and said, let's be friends, and then you're friends. The point is, there was that interaction. You didn't automatically become friends. Uh, social media is kind of like that too. It's kind of like kindergarten as well. No one's going to know you exist until you talk to them, until you interact with them, until you're social. So um, let's say this is a brand new account. I don't have any followers. This is one way. I'm going in. I'm giving likes or favorites. They're called different things on different platforms. I'm giving hearts. So I'm giving a like to a variety of photos here. And what that does is it gives that particular account such as Kier, what is that? Kierfot Eye Group. They got an alert. They got a notification that says, Victor liked your photo. So I'm going to do that for several people. In all of these accounts, they're either people or companies, they're getting that notification that says, um, that says, you got a favorite. Now some of those accounts then, are going to reciprocate. They're going to say, oh, okay, you favorited my item, I'm going to favorite your item. So that's being, that's being social. You're getting what you're giving. You're giving likes. You're going to get likes back also. So it's a matter of giving favorites. Excuse me, Victor. Mm -hmm. can, can you look for uh, like like Yes, remember on the previous screen there was also an option to look for places. At the very top we had top, uh, people, tags, and places. So we can search also in specific places. So this this is one of the actions. And then that one's a video. Um, the um, this is one of the interactions, which is, which is a favorite. You're gonna go through. You're gonna favorite some uh, uh, some other pictures, and then um, the point of that is you're casting a lure. Like I said previously, you're gonna go fishing to catch fish. You need bait. This is part of that bait in social media. I'm gonna give some favorites to relevant things, not just everything like whatever cat picture or a picture of a burrito or a picture of a sunset or whatever I'm gonna be giving favorites to things that relate to what my company is about right now I'm doing a search on technology so let's say I like that one too favorite that these companies here these people are getting notifications that I'm interacting with them then they may come back and favorite my stuff well that's one of the things that you can do and it's the lowest level. It's not the worst, it's the lowest. The worst is that someone does nothing, that they don't interact with you. But all of these people that I'm interacting with, they might then take a moment to say, who is this Victor person? And they go look at my account, and they look at my stuff, and then they give me favorites. Well, that's nice, but the next level is a comment. So in my particular app, I've got that icon right there of comment. On yours, it's a little round speech bubble. But a comment is the next level. Is the next level because then now I have to think about what should I write here. I could write nice. But is that very meaningful. Maybe I could write, let's see, what's that picture again? I thought I liked reading when I was a kid, then I realized I don't have a phone. Um, so you want to look at the picture. Let's see, we spoke, you listened. We now carry the Otterbox Commuter and Defender series. Great. 
So the point here is I'm going to take some time, some effort, to actually uh, comment on what these things are, uh, what these pictures are, in a more meaningful way. That will entice people a little bit more to interact with you. So I'll say something like, great. I wish I had this when I dropped my phone. off a cliff. So yes, I am going to be liking things and and uh, commenting on things from complete strangers. But this is, I think, one of the powerful things about social media. You're going to reach people that uh, you might not have before. All of these people have chosen to be on Instagram, on Twitter, on YouTube, whatever and you can interact with them. Yes, some people will say, who are you? Leave me alone, and you get blocked. But that happens so rarely. <laughs> Honestly, that happens so rarely. I've been doing it for years, and I can count like on one hand that that's happened, that someone says, leave me alone. Especially if you write something interesting or funny or a question. There's an art and a science to this. Question? Do you, is there a way to find out, um, I can't, the the best way really to find out whose it is is looking at what stuff they've posted what did they write in their biography oh that's I mean, I reverse the images and it's like traces it back to like i don't know like i i can't pinpoint it so i've been trying to figure out if there's like a way to do it. No, unfortunately, some of that is limited because only the Instagram company itself knows some of these things, and they don't release the technology to be able to do some of that, unfortunately, because that could be abused also. So maybe, yeah, someone is messing with you, unfortunately, but the best that you could do is go to the go to the help and report that. Hmm. Maybe... So that's the thing about social media, that there is that positive and negative that sometimes it can be abused. Uh, and uh, hopefully these companies get better at, at dealing with the negative stuff. But yeah, some things you can't do, like you can't find out exactly who's behind the account. It's just what they have, what they have chosen to add. So here I'm taking a moment to, to write a comment, which is one step higher than a like. Because on a like, I can just give likes and move on and move on with my day and, and kind of forget about it. They're the lowest level. They're not the worst. The worst is that someone doesn't do anything. But here, I'm, I could give likes to alert people, and then you can get some likes back. The next level is a comment right here. Again, this is what I'm saying about if I'm just writing nice or cool or writing a little emoji or something. You know, if I'm just putting a little happy face like that. You put the, the at and then your name. Yes, I'm getting, I'm getting to that, yes. So the thing is that depending what you write, maybe like a question, something funny, something relevant. Often if you write a question, people want to answer the question, especially if it's relevant, if it makes sense. So here I'm just going to say something funny. Great, I wish I had this when I dropped my phone off a cliff, so then I will click Publish. And now that Twitter, uh, now that Instagram account I experts repair got a notification that says uh, Victor commented on your uh, on your photo. Exactly. That's how you become known. 
this is like in the real world let's say you're you're um you're at a party no one knows you well you're going up to someone and tapping them on the shoulder and saying hi now they know you <laughs> this is kind of the same thing on social media you're tapping them on the shoulder and letting them know you exist and the point of that is that they could then like your stuff they could then comment on your stuff Well, that was the second level, adding a comment. The third level, the highest level, that's a follow. So I could give follows to accounts, and then they will, they could follow me back. Um, it might not happen. It might be I'm going to have to give a lot of favorites or a lot of comments. Or a lot of follows and then I'll get some so that's a viable strategy to once a day log in maybe spend five minutes two minutes just going through giving favorites and then tomorrow log in and spend five minutes following accounts little by little that's gonna snowball the accounts that you're starting to interact with they will eventually take notice you will get some follows you will get some likes you will get some comments you will start to build a reputation. So let's say this one, CCN Media. If you tap on, you should be able to tap on their picture. If you tap on a picture, it'll show you their profile. So they said, where culture is recognized, interviews and news, 635 followers, 379 following, 363 posts. And then in my case, in my app, that button up there is the follow button. But on yours, it probably says the word follow. Yes, but before that, you want to, you want to look and say, do you really want to follow them? Because once you've chosen to follow an account, you're going to start to see their pictures on your home screen. And you might be following an account that really you don't want to see their pictures. You want to get their follow, maybe, but you don't really want to follow them to get their pictures. You can unfollow later, which I'll talk about. But um, that's just be aware of that, that once you click follow, you're going to start to see their pictures. So let's see here, Tony, Tony Salib. I'm looking at his profile, what he's about. He's a graphic designer. He's got some interesting photos. Okay, great. I'll follow. He got a notification that says, Victor followed you. Send me a link and then I'll send it to you. Yes. All right. So there's nuances to to following also because I, I don't I just don't want to click follow 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 follow. Um, because I might follow an account really that I don't really want to see their pictures and I can unfollow them later but uh, I do want to take a moment to look at a particular account so this person Eric M. Logan says I am uh, an IT professional who loves to run or am I a runner who loves technology always hungry to succeed alright so he's posting about technology so I followed
What you also want to look at when you're thinking about following an account is to look at their followers and following ratio. You want to see if they've got a lot of followers and very few that they are following, they're less likely that they're going to follow you. So if, they, if this guy here had 1,000 followers and following 124, he's mostly concerned about himself getting followers rather than following you. So you probably won't get followed back. If you see that he's got followers 12 and following 124, he might follow you because it looks like he's more prone to following people than caring, than caring that people follow him back. So you want to look at what they're posting, what their bio is, and and if they're buying, be careful about that. So you want to be looking at that they're following a good amount of accounts because then most likely they'll follow you. So you cannot invite people to your website? I try to invite and they, uh, they block the comments. <laughs> <laughs> that's, uh, that's true. There are some limitations because Instagram doesn't want it to be spammy. So yeah, um, either the person deleted your comment or maybe something on Instagram themselves took it away. So yeah, you have to be careful. Um, so I would say to first, you know, not, don't do the hard sell yet. Uh, you want to do a soft sell, which is kind of build an audience first, and then start to try to get, you know, a sale and such. Now, I could spend plenty of time doing these techniques, uh, favorites, comments, and follows. But before we get too far in that, again, about the bait. I'm trying to catch fish. And I'm using some of this bait of the, the, the likes, the comments, and the follows. But I'm missing a big piece of the bait here. If I have a brand new account, I don't have any photos for people to, to favorite or to comment on. So a better tactic actually to before starting to do what we're talking about here is to actually post some content. I'm going to back up to the home screen. On this particular account that I'm that I'm using, I've already got a few a few posts here. So I've already got a few things that people could look at to say that's interesting, let me favorite that. Or that's interesting, let me comment. Or that's interesting, let me follow. If you've got a brand new account and you've only got one picture, that doesn't say enough for people of an enticement to actually follow you. It's sort of like a chicken or the egg, which comes first. So if you want to get followers, but you don't have anything to entice people to follow you, why would they follow you? So that's why part of the homework assignment is going to be to actually publish some pictures um, to actually upload some pictures so that it entices people to comment, like, or follow. So what I did, so what I just talked about a moment ago is valuable, but it's not going to be as valuable until you have some pictures and such. Uh, so how many of you created an Instagram account brand new with me on Monday? A few people. Okay. So then you don't have too much content on the account yet. Um, you want to start to add some content, some pictures. So again, deciding on what your account is about. So here, for example, web design, graphic design, social media marketing, done right. So in theory, I should be posting pictures related to this stuff. Technology, graphic design. Yes, once in a while I can put a cat picture. People love those. 
uh, but it's about technology, business, social media, whatever, maybe an inspirational sunset. But here at least I've got a few, a few posts, 27, to start to get followers. I'm going to be doing following, and some of those will follow me back. Not all of them, but some will follow me back. And let's say you do get followers. You don't have to follow them back. Um, it's not bad. It's, you're not hurting anyone's feelings. doesn't matter. If someone follows you, you can check them out and, and see, okay, they're, they're worthy. Let me follow them. If not, then you don't have to follow. So depending about what your company is, um, right now what I'm going to do is show about posting a photo. It's pretty straightforward, but I'm going to post a photo. You can delete these. You can unfollow people. You can uncomment. You can unlike. You can post a photo and then delete it but I'm going to post a photo so back on my home screen On my home screen, on my particular app, I have a camera icon right there at the bottom. This is my icon to take a photo. On my particular app, I have the ability to uh, do video, photo, collage, etc. Let's say I'm going to take a photo of me taking a photo of me taking a photo. So Instagram is pretty famous for being able to um, filter your photos. So I have all of these filters that give it different effects. And then, of course, there's no effect. If you just want to leave it alone, that's fine. But people like to put these filters. borders. You've got buttons to blur things. Change the colors. So that's something that you can experiment with, uh, the actual filters. The point is content. All of the social media also then boils down to content. Are you posting content that is interesting, relevant, useful, funny, um, you know, whatever it is you're trying to accomplish online. In my technology company, I want to get followers so that then maybe I'm a blogger. I want people to read my blog. Well, through Instagram, I'm going to try to build an audience. So I'm going to be posting photos about technology and social media and that sort of thing. So let's say I'm taking that photo. So then when you're, when you're going to upload the photo, you have these options. Do you want to post it to your followers? Do you want to send it directly to a particular person? So that's just one person or a collection of people, like your VIP people. But what I'm, do what I'm doing here is I'm just going to publish this to all my followers. And there's a spot for... Well, it's not the official Instagram app. It's an alternative app, but it's Instagram. Uh, why do you ask? No, because of uh, like you know, check marking like what else you want to. Well, 
uh, on your app, you should still have it because um, I've got an, my iPad right here, and it still says Facebook and Tumblr and all of that. Does yours not have it? Mine shows it as check marks here on my phone, but my iPad shows it as icons. It's just that every app is a little bit different. Yeah, they're all they're all gonna do very similar things, just look a little different. But I've got a spot here for writing a caption, so some text. A, a moment ago when I was um, searching technology, I found those particular photos because people had used that keyword, technology, in their caption. So let's say here, um, the way I would do this is I would write uh, a simple sentence about what the photo is and then add a couple of hashtags or keywords. So let's say this is a photo of a photo of a photo. I'm going to write a sentence that explains what it is, and then I'm going to add hashtags. And hashtags are those keywords that help you get found. So let's say hashtag technology. And there's a limit. I believe the limit is 30 hashtags. So you can add a bunch of these keywords that people can find when they search you. So sometimes you, you see that. There's a photo, and it's got 29 hashtags. You can technically put you know 30 hashtags, but at a certain point it looks spammy, doesn't it? So what I would say, three to five maximum hashtags. That way your posts don't look like spam and people don't ignore you. So one or two or three, up to five, but I would really go for three hashtags that really define what your, what your photo is about. You saw earlier when I searched for technology, it suggested technology. Technology is good. Technology sucks. Technology today. So it was giving me suggestions. With a little bit of research, before I post a photo, I can determine which are these tags that might work well with my photo. And the concept is, I want to use keywords that people would care about, uh, hashtags that people would, um, would search for. You have the option of tag people and add location. So if you tag people, it will alert other Instagram users that they've been sort of added to or featured in your photo. You have to be careful about that because, you know, if you tag your friends and family, that's one thing. But if you're a company trying to get followers and such, it doesn't make sense for you to be adding people as a tag of those that you don't really know. So you're going to take it as, who's this weird company that's trying to mess with me? So um, uh, the adding, adding people or tagging people, um, it doesn't always apply. And then add location might apply, especially if, like, let's say I've got a, a pizza shop, and I'm taking photos of the pizza coming right out of the oven, really tasty. I could add the location to that photo so that when people view the map on Instagram, they will see, oh, I only live a block away. Let me go get that pizza. 
So adding location could be useful. So in my case, this photo uh, is being is is the location being added of Southwestern College. And then you should have the options to also share to Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr, Flickr. It might also say Foursquare. And on my particular one, I've got one called VK, which you've probably never heard of, but it's very popular in Russia. So the point of this is, once we get more complex and we're managing a Twitter, and an Instagram, and a Facebook, uh, and Tumblr, or whatever. It's going to take a lot of time to manage all of these accounts, right? You're able to actually link a bunch of them together. So if I post something right here on Instagram, I can also set it up that it'll automatically show up on Twitter and Facebook. That way I don't have to remind myself, oh, I posted that, but I didn't post it on Facebook. So this is one way to save you some effort to cross-post. And so it's a good way to do it if you if you have some limited time. That way you can um, that way you can um, post to multiple places at once. Do you have to add your your Facebook? If, you, if you're only going to post on Instagram, it doesn't matter any of those. But if you also want to share this automatically to Facebook, then you have to, you have to click that and log in to connect it. Oh. So let's say I'm, I'm not going to share this to any other networks, but if I wanted to, I could, I could turn those on, and it'll ask me to sign in and connect and all of that. But let's say I only want to share it to, to Instagram. So I can click to share. I can click the share button. It's been uploaded. My um, my followers would see it if I'm a brand new account. I don't have followers, but that's okay. We want to post stuff so that then someone could possibly find it and then follow me. So let's take a break. Uh, you might think about posting a photo. Let's take a break. When we come back, we'll talk a little bit more, uh, a few more techniques on Instagram, and then we'll talk about the homework, um, and then we'll go on. So at 6 o'clock, we'll take a 10-minute break. We'll be back at 6.10. We'll talk a little bit more. You can add links to Instagram.